Hi, how's everybody doing today? This is Sean, and I'm here with a video to explain what is actually going on in Israel. Now, I put a video out about two and a half months ago, as you can see it on the bottom, is an educational video about the Jewish, Israelite, and Hebrew people. And I told them that war is coming soon. This is two and a half months, I, I, I called this, because this is biblical, folks. This stuff is, is going on. And uh, let me explain how we got to this point so you understand exactly what kind of people we're dealing with and what is actually going on. Okay, uh, let's see. I think it was around November 2nd or 3rd of 1917, there was a thing called the Belfort uh, Agreement, a declaration. Uh, um, Mr. Uh, Sir Walter... Um, the hell is his name? So Arthur Belford was the was a secretary of, of foreign affairs in England, and uh, I, Walter Rothschild, so Walter Rothschild, and him were having an exchange about what uh, what needs to be done with the Jewish people because they have no homeland. And after they uh, were over in um, Russia, they got exiled out of there. Because they're, they're not Jewish folks, they're not Hebrew, and they're not Israelites. They're Ashkenazis. They're Khazarian Ashkenazis. And they had, to, they had um, they're responsible for the assassination of the Tsar and uh, Anastasia. And they made a movie about it and all that. They were the people who were responsible for that. And then they went into Germany. And then uh, Germany's economy was so bad that people were, were literally going to the store with a beer. Wheel, wheelbarrow full of money just to buy a loaf of bread and then when hitler became chancellor he got rid of two things he got rid of usury which is when you borrow money and you charge outrageous interest uh, on the money that you borrow he got rid of that and he got rid of pornography in berlin because it was uh it was crazy and out of hand and then six years later um germany had the one of the greatest economies in the world and that's during the depression you know uh, they started making their own goods and things of that nature. And then the same thing that's going on in Ukraine right now, a similar situation happened with uh, Germany. They had to invade Poland to get German citizens out of there because the Polish people were uh, doing unspeakable acts to these people that were speaking German. Um, they were crucifying them, disemboweling them, uh, chopping their heads off, raping and torturing the women, just outrageous stuff. And so uh, Hitler told them to stop, and they didn't. And then Russia warned them if they were to invade Poland, that there would be a war. So he was put in a situation because he got rid of the Rothschilds uh, banking industry in Germany. And that was what um, these people do. They start wars on both sides because they finance both sides of the war. So that uh, in 1917, which is 100 years ago, they wrote this. This 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 uh this agreement that Palestine uh, the land it was Palestine at the time would be um given to uh the Jewish people which like I said are not Jewish they're Ashkenazis and ninety over ninety five percent of the people that live in Israel are Jewish Hebrew or uh, Israelite they have no bloodlines to Abraham nor do they have any bloodlines to Jacob or Isaac. So they're Ashkenazis, which means that they just converted to Judaism and they polluted that religion to take the land and steal uh, off of people. And these are facts. It's not my opinion. And when someone says you're anti-Semitic, they're stupid because these people aren't related to Shem and you're not cursing the land of Israel. You are calling out villains and uh, demons. And that's what these people are. They've been in, uh, they changed their name quite a few times, but the last time they changed their name from Bacharach to the Rothschilds. Uh, Jesus speaks about these people in uh, Revelations when he calls them the synagogue of Satan because they're, they're, uh, they're actually trying to destroy all the Gentiles and they're actually trying to destroy the real Jewish and Hebrew and Israelite people. And that's why you have these wars. So basically, think about this. In 1948, they... They took the land from Palestine and gave it to Israel and made it the state of Israel, okay? Now think about this, folks. Whatever state that you live in right now, wherever you live at in the world, think about this. You go to sleep at night 
And then the next day, you have military people coming to your home and back telling you that your land no longer belongs to you. And you have to get out of your house. And then they take you and your family and all the other people that live in your neighborhood. And they go ahead and they um, put you in a little part of the area that you lived in. But it's all fenced off. And uh, you have to rely on them, the, the people that put you in these cages, because it's caged off. And you can't leave. So you have to rely on them for water, food, and shelter, and um, that's daily. And then the ones that said, hey, this is my land and I have a, a constitutional right to my land, um, those land, those people got bombed and like 18, over 18,000 homes were destroyed and uh, over 600 children were, were, were killed and uh, thousands, tens of thousands of women and ch uh, men were uh, also killed. So imagine that happening to you. You wake up and all of a sudden everything that you own, everything that you uh, love is gone. And that's everybody, all your family, all your friends, everybody. And then that's happening to your family and friends too. They're losing everybody. So this is going on and on. And it started happening in 1948. And it's it's done intentionally. And with that, with that strategically in that area in the Middle East, they can actually uh, cause, you know, control the area to make sure the other countries don't unite to find out, you know, to do a better life because they're going to get rid of uh, usury because that's what Muslims, uh, that's part of their religion. They don't believe in usury. And as I said, that is when you take, you know, a loan and you loan it out to somebody and you charge them interest rate on it, which they can never pay back. Okay, that's how you get thirty three trillion dollars in debt from interest and compact interest that you'll never be able to pay back which it the money it does, isn't even real anyway it's all pretend and all these wars are they're the win-win for the Rothschilds they support both sides and you got America actually giving the money to, to fight this stuff so what's going on now is all these countries in the Middle East are waking up to this Rothschild grift and they're breaking off from it and they're gonna start their own own currency and run their own things their own way and now they're uniting, and that's scary because that's biblical. And what it says is uh, that one day that Israel, I'm going to turn this back on. One day Israel is going to be attacked so badly, and the true, the true people of God, the Hebrews, the Israelites, and the Jewish people will be, um, you know, in such a way where Jesus has to intervene himself. So that's what's going on now, folks. You have the fake ones, which it, they, it's, it's in their... Uh, you know, in the in their own uh, scientific research, that 95% of these people are not even you know related to any of the people in the Bible, which we're going to explain this, okay? Because I made a little video and I'm just explaining why this is going on, how this is going on, and what the what's actually going on. This has nothing to do with being any religion or any of that stuff. It has to do deal with good and bad you judge people by their actions and what they're doing and what their actions of this country that's doing this to these other people is inhumane it's war criminal it's war crimes it's crimes against humanity it's 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 going to come to an end and it is there is going to be world war three folks but you know you just live your life the best you can don't let this stuff you know put fear in you because god has control of this okay He's allowing this to happen for a reason, okay? So, and God loves you, and he loves me, and we are all made in the image and likeness of God, and God loves us. It's just a few demons that we're fighting against, and let's hear how this all started and what we are dealing with. And these aren't even considered, we're not even going to be talking about the Kazarians and Ashkenazis. We're just talking about the basic fundamentals of theology here, okay? This is how this works out. confuse Christians at the times saying quoting the bible saying oh if you bless israel can't hear this you'll be blessed, and if you curse israel they'll be cursed thinking that they're talking about that modern day country full of kazarians ashkenazis are from ukraine that's why i just said that <laughs> from the holy land uh, and even the ones that are you know they're not um the israelites they're not they're not. You know, the Hebrews and the Israelites and the Jews are all different things, man. The Jews are from Judah. 
right? And uh, he was the one that betrayed uh, Joseph, you know, the guy with the technicolor raincoat and sold him into slavery. Yeah, that's kind of their going theme, right? And uh, so it only represents a very small portion of the people who were the Israelites, the tribe of Judah, and uh, they're not even the people that are there now. So here's a, just a brief uh, breakdown, you know, and it doesn't even get into the Khazarians and the Ashkenazi in this. But even as is, it still paints the picture so you can understand. These are not the people from the Bible. It's a pretty known fact that the Jews are God's chosen people, that the Jewish homeland is Israel, that the Jews believe in the Old Testament, and that the Old Testament is about Jews. However, almost none of these facts are true. Nowhere in the Bible does it call the Jews God's chosen people. Modern day Israel isn't really the homeland of the Jews. The Jews don't really believe in the Old Testament, and only maybe 5% of the people in the Old Testament can even be considered Jewish. So now that you've granted me an anti Semite, we can begin. So, the expression anti-Semite literally means against Shem or his descendants. However, being anti-Jewish isn't the same as being anti-Semitic, so let me explain. The Semites are the descendants of a man named Shem, who would father some of the world's most renowned empires and dynasties, such as the Assyrian and Babylonian empires, and even the Persians can call themselves the Semites. So, why is it when you say something against the Jews, you are considered anti-Semitic? Because just like stealing your religion, your homes, your money and businesses, some Jews also love stealing names, inheritance, and land. So Shem is the son of Noah, the guy who built the ark when Mesopotamia flooded. The Sumerian kingdom would be destroyed by the flood, and the Semites would descend from the Caucasian mountains and establish the Akkadian Empire. Shem would have children, and one of his descendants would be named Eber. He would be the father of the Hebrew people, and the Semites would be called by his name. Eber's line would eventually give birth to a man named Abram or a Jew named Abraham, except Abraham has never been a Jew, nor will he ever be a Jew, and to call Abraham one is just plain ignorant, so let's go through it. So, according to the Bible, Abraham was a Hebrew and not a Jew, who God promised would be the father of many nations, not one single Jewish nation, but many nations, and that through him all the families of the world would be blessed. Abraham would pass this blessing on to his younger son Isaac and not his eldest son Ishmael. Isaac would have twin sons named Esau and Jacob. Again, the Abrahamic blessing would be passed down to the younger brother Jacob, who would then be renamed to Israel. Israel would then have 12 sons. The sons would each become their own tribes and eventually become their own nations. One of his sons would be named Judah, who would be the father of the Jewish people, and all Jews are related to him. Even though all Jews are Israelites, majority of Israelites are not Jews. Obviously, Israel would have to pass the Abrahamic blessing to Judah in order for them to be the chosen people. Israel would want his favorite son, Joseph, to inherit the Abrahamic blessing. However, Judah, the father of the Jews, would be jealous and conspire with his brothers to have Joseph killed. In the end, Judah sold Joseph into slavery for silver, much like Judah sold Jesus to the Jews. So, the Bible portrays Judah as a jealous villain and Joseph as the chosen son. While in slavery, Joseph would rise to become the Prime Minister of Egypt and father two sons named Ephraim and Manasseh. In the end, Israel would adopt Joseph's sons and pass the Abrahamic lesson on to them, making them the chosen people and dividing Joseph into two tribes, making 13 tribes of Israel. As for the father of the Jews, his two eldest sons would die and Judah would end up bowing down to Joseph. So, now that you understand that the Jews were never intended to bless the world, nor were they ever considered the chosen people, we can move on to our second point. So, is the Jewish homeland Israel? And the answer is yes and not at all. Israel was originally called the land of Canaan, named after Noah's grandson, Canaan. The land of Canaan was conquered by the Israelites after they left Egypt with Moses found in the book of Exodus. The Bible says God commanded the Israelites to punish the Canaanites for their sexual immorality, which led to child sacrifice, which would eventually lead to cannibalism. 
The word cannibal actually comes from the words Canaan and the god of Baal. Baal was the god of Canaan, and the priests were known for eating the children after they were sacrificed to him. Hence why we call them Canny Baal. So now that you understand what kind of people were living in Canaan, try not to feel so bad when you read that God ordered us to exterminate them. The borders of the Jewish homeland were established by Joshua, who was one of the descendants of Joseph and not from Judah. So if we were to restore the Jews to their original land, according to the Bible, the Jewish homeland would look less like this and more like that. So, like the story of Joseph and Judah, their children likewise wouldn't get along either. After becoming nations, there would be a civil war. The Jews would rule the southern kingdom of Judea, while Joseph's sons would rule the northern kingdom, keeping the name Israel. They would have different religions, believe in different gods, and while Judah stayed in Judea, Joseph would ally himself with the Phoenicians and establish colonies and trade posts all over the Mediterranean. The kingdom of Israel would be corrupted by foreign ideologies, and like the Canaanites would fall into materialism, sexual morality, and child sacrifice, which would lead to them being conquered by the Assyrian Empire. Some of the Israelites would be taken into captivity into the lands of Assyria and Media, while some of the Israelites and Phoenicians would flee to their colonies and trade posts, fulfilling the promise made to Abraham that the world would be blessed through him, as he would be the father of many nations. So the sons of Joseph would become fruitful and multiply among the nations, forgetting who they are, which shouldn't surprise us considering their names literally mean fruitful and forgetful. Just like the Northern Kingdom, the Jews would fall into sexual immorality and start sacrificing their children. They would be conquered and enslaved by the Babylonians, then freed and re-established by the Persians, conquered again by the Greeks, and later occupied by the Romans. While under Roman rule, the Jews would launch the greatest revolution in Roman history, known as the Great Revolt, which would fail, causing Judea, Jerusalem, and the Jewish Temple to be destroyed, ironically fulfilling everything Jesus and the Christians said would happen. The Jews, not being satisfied with losing their temple and homeland, would stab the Romans in the back by launching two more rebellions, killing over half a million Greeks and Romans. God would bless the chosen people with two more humiliating defeats, along with a banishment from the land, causing Judea to be renamed to Syria-Palestinia. So, the reason the Jews have been able to take Palestine really rests on the fact that they've stolen the name Israel and have convinced the Christian West that they are the chosen people and that they alone are Israel. But once putting things into perspective, we see that just isn't true. Which brings us to our third point. Do the Jews believe in the Old Testament? The answer is kind of and not really. While waving around the Old Testament as if they believe in it, the Jews actually have secondary books that they consider just as important, the main book being called the Talmud. To explain the Talmud, we have to understand some basic Jewish Roman history, going back to Emperor Claudius, who, like Emperor Tiberius, tried to ban the Jews from Rome after branding them aggressive troublemakers. Sadly, Emperor Claudius didn't understand how to play the Game of Thrones and ended up mis 